President Dwight D. Eisenhower entered political office in 1953 with the Cold War on the horizon. Stalin had just died, and the decorated war hero turned president saw a chance to break from the path of confrontation with the Soviet Union, and he warned Americans of what an unending arms race would cost our society. What can the world, or any nation in it, hope for if no turning is found on this dread road? The worst to be feared and the best to be expected can be simply stated. The worst is atomic war. The best would be this, a life of perpetual fear and tension, a burden of arms draining the wealth and labor of all people, a wasting of strength that defies the American system or the Soviet system or any system to achieve true abundance and happiness for the people of this earth. Every gun that is made, every warship launched, every rocket fired signifies, in the final sense, a theft from those who hunger and are not fed, those who are cold and are not clothed. This world in arms is not spending money alone. It is spending the sweat of its laborers, the genius of its scientists, the hopes of its children. The cost of one modern heavy bomber is this, a modern brick school in more than 30 cities, two electric power plants each serving a town of 60,000 population. It is two fine, fully equipped hospitals. We pay for a single destroyer with new homes that could have housed more than 8,000 people. We pay for a single fighter plane with a half million bushels of wheat. This is, I repeat, the best way of life to be found on the road the world has been taking. This is not a way of life at all, in any true sense. Under the cloud of threatening war, it is humanity hanging from a cross of iron. There are two distinct paths before us. Either keep going down the road we've been taking, or change course. The tab for the war machine is still being paid for by the American people. And every dollar spent recklessly on militarism robs Americans of the fruits of their own labor and the hopes for their children's future.